is that at this point our code seems to be working and uh, so far the, um, the, the code, we get some result. It did say class added right here. Uh, and then just to see if this was working, I did console log, but remember the result goes to the log. Maybe instead we should have it display on screen. So we'll continue that on line 24. This just goes to the log, and if we forget to look in the log, we won't see the error. But uh, we will add on line 25, we'll, we'll say, let's copy line uh, 22 so we don't have to retype it. Let's copy line 22 and paste it here so that then instead it says the, the error message. Uh, so copy that over and we'll make it say, I think we can just do error or we might have to do that stringify, but we'll see what happens. So if there's an error, hopefully display the error. Mm, that's a class. So we might have to do Ruben then the, the stringify. I can't what was that again? JSON all caps dot string i fi. Yeah. You need a G at the end. Oh, it's the alternate spelling I see. <laughs> yes. Alright, so uh, stringify. This is a this is a command that, that it's built into JavaScript, but here we're specifically applying it to some JSON results, and we're saying whatever thing that is, well, just turn it into a string, stringify it. So uh, that should also work up previously when we were trying to do the result, but again, uh, most likely this will be like very techie, very techie result, uh, which might not be very user-friendly to the to regular people. So uh, one possible error is that if you fill nothing in and click go, that's an error. Uh, if you try to put in a CRN that's the same CRN that you already used before, that's an error. So try to produce an error and see what happens under else. So I'm going to go with just simply not putting anything in. Go message invalid state error name error. So again, it's giving us this raw error result. Let's see if that works. I'm, I'm just getting the status for Chrome. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm getting that too. Interesting. What browsers are you guys using? Chrome. 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 Hmm. Well, computers are great when they work. <laughs> Hmm. You get a better result there because I think also. So you maybe want to take a message. Message. Is it just MSG or, or the word message? Okay, so um, let me show you that. Here I've, um, I've I didn't put anything in, and my result gives me the full JSON string. And notice this is similar to what we were doing over here, where we said there's something called underscore ID and fill it with class CRN. There's something called title, fill it with class title, etc. This error up here is a representation of that also. Message 
colon invalid state error, comma, name colon error, or similar to that. So if I want to say what exactly are we getting inside of message, we can change this to say error dot message. If you're getting simply like a 409 error or whatever, you can say show me that value inside of the string, the JSON string. So then slightly different result is that it just says invalid state error, which again, it's not as helpful as it could be. If you don't put the JSON string, if I if you say the thing. Well, I, I think also depending on the web browser, we could be looking at a variety of the, of the same thing. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go over actually to Chrome. ID yeah. is required for puts. Yeah. So we just we're going to see a lot of different types of errors and such. And again, this is is what I'm saying about the can of worms of of um, now we need to deal with all of this stuff. And how how do we know that like your error where it says state error? Is a programming error or the ID is required for puts is an error in the function of what that box is supposed to what of what code is supposed to be. How do you distinguish that? Mm. As, as the creator. Well, you have to think is it a is it a logic error? Is it an error? In syntax, is it an error as defined by the specification? Because also, if we look at the PouchDB documentation, it's going to tell you there what perhaps some possible errors could be. Uh, so I can match up perhaps an error that appears there with what the documentation is telling me and then figure out, oh, I mistyped something. So the short answer is that it's, it's kind of complicated. Yeah, because this is what I said about, well, what if class CRN can only be numbers, and I put in letters? That could give us some kind of errors down the line. So there's a lot that we could do here to validate this stuff. Okay, so let's move on, because obviously we can get stuck up on this a lot. So I'm just going to make it say here, error. What kind of error? Well, again, there's lots of kind of errors and lots of things to f figure out, but let's move on. Now, did you notice that when... Let's say uh, I'm filling in uh, CRN123, and I'm doing some class, Flash, and then Campos. And so I click Go, Class Added, that's good. And if I try to click Go again, I get an error, because I'm trying to put in the exact same data into the database. Technically, only the CRN needs to be unique, so I could call this Flash2, I'm sorry, I could call this 1, 2, 3, 4, and leave, the, leave all of these the same, and it'll accept that, because it's a new unique CRN. Well, what I want is as soon as you click Go, clear out those fields, because now I want to add a new class. I don't want that old data in these fields still hanging around, 
because of this one of the issues that happened there. I, I wanted to clean out. So I want to clear all three of those fields also at the same time that I do click that I click go. So we're going to create a function that does that in addition to putting you know in addition to putting the um, the records into the database I also wanted to clear the fields. So we'll say after db we'll create a new function here. Question? Well, we already have the reset. Yes, but again, uh, I want it at the moment, like right here, if I click go, I want that to clean out at that moment. Yeah. I have to manually click clear. Can we call the reset? We're going to do something like that. We're going to do something like that. Um, so in here, uh, we've got the whole db put. You remember that starts on line 20 and it ends on 27. Make a new line on 29. Right there. We'll write function. We'll call this clear fields. clear fields, and what we'll do here is blank out the three fields. Uh, so we'll do document.getElementById. .value. We'll do quotes, empty quotes. Now we need to tell it, of course, which ID. We'll do that in a moment. But uh, here we'll write that the value of the ID that we will specify, we will, we will make it empty. We will clear it out. And we need to do that to three fields, so we'll copy and paste this twice more. And then within the ID parentheses, we'll say which, which fields are we talking about. Title field, uh, instructor field. Well, how, what order do we have it in? CRN title and instructor. So then, title or CRN doesn't matter, but see, we'll just keep the same order as on screen. CRN field, title field, and then instructor field. So I've created this function clear fields. Whenever we need to clear the fields, all three of them, or six of them, or 90 of them, we just run that function. So we're going to say, at the moment that we've uh, input the data into the database, also clear the fields. That's going to be up on our if statement. So let me zoom out here. Check your code here. Yes. Also, if you were to Oh, okay, that might be pretty. Uh, that might be pretty helpful. Let, for a lengthy form. For a lengthy form, exactly. Okay, let me make a note. We'll come back to do that in one moment. That might actually be more efficient. Um, but let's do this next part. Then we'll do that. That's a good idea. So uh, we'll say which um, clear the fields out up here on line um, twenty-two. If there's no error, that means that the data did get put into the database. We'll then also clear those fields. There we go, clear fields.
right, so try that. Put in uh, some new items in the in the fields and click go and it should give you the result that we saw before and then it should also clear those fields out. And then in a moment we'll we'll do it so that it's a little more efficient. No, this one should be outside of the. Um, yeah, so you have not closed all the add classes function. Oh, okay, let's see. Yeah, that one right there. Let's see. Add classes. Let's find from the scope standpoint if it just only exists inside of the platform. It depends on whether you want to use it outside. That's true. So this would work, but good eye there. Uh, we're actually inside of, we made this function inside of the add class function, so we can only use it in the add class function. We might need to use it elsewhere. So actually, that should be outside of that. So notice we started the function add classes, and it ends with the curly brace above script. Oops, we should have this clear field outside of it. So I'm going to make myself some space uh, to clear that and then move this outside of it. So I moved over to line 31. It's outside of the add classes. See if this works. Error. That was in Firefox, an error. Hmm. Uh, but anyway, here in Chrome, I created the, the, the class, the a class, and then I uh, click Go, and then it cleared out those three, those three fields. But it's a good point. Maybe we've got seven fields or 12 fields. We would have to have uh, more of these get element by ID. So let's, uh, let's try that out, Ross. So, we need an ID on the on the form itself first. So we're going to add an ID to the form. And call this class form. What's uh, next? Wherever you want it to do it, then you can uh, do another get element by ID. Then said, use the ID for a form. <coughs> so, so right there. 
and um, reset as a method. Uh, dot reset, just dot reset. Yeah, but that's it. Okay, so another way to do that, you see we gave an ID to the form itself, and then we only needed to say this one command, just reset the whole form instead of going into each field. Yes? Yeah. No, it's, it's just plain JavaScript. I ended up finding it on W3 schools, I think. Oh, cool. Yes. If it's JavaScript, we don't we don't have a a, a reference to any of those JS. Well, JavaScript in modern web browsers is just built in. Oh. JavaScript. But if we were talking about jQuery or jQuery mobile, then you're right about that. Oh, okay. Notice this whole time we've been writing document, get element by ID, etc. And I, I think you had mentioned previously, well, isn't that the same as, you know, dollar, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, but that's jQuery. And we don't have a reference to jQuery, so we're just using the plain old uh, JavaScript that's built into modern web browsers. JavaScript just works through the browser app. Yes. JQuery that we have to bring in the yeah. It is, but then we need to tell it this command makes sense. Just like up here, we've got new PouchDB, the very first thing. People were getting errors because they didn't understand what does PouchDB mean, new PouchDB. Well, that makes that means something because we've got a reference to the PouchJS file. That's why also we don't need to say here script, like in the old days, type equals text slash JavaScript. Because it's JavaScript now. That's redundant with HTML5. Yes. All right, so um, we've been collecting this stuff in the database. And we've been seeing that if we go to the element inspector, we can actually look at the data, but obviously a regular user is never going to look at that. There isn't even something like this, because eventually we're going to have this working on a mobile device. Um, so for our purposes, yeah, we're seeing data being stored here. Look at that, I've got 10 records. I now want to display those things on screen in a pretty format. So that's the next thing we're going to do here. Now we're going to get complicated, if you think we're not complicated now. Now we're going to display the stuff on screen, and this is data that we can display in a table. It's tabular data. It's rows and columns of data. A column that will be the class number, a column that will be the uh, uh, class title, and a column that will be the instructor. Tabular data, perfect for, uh, for, for the purpose of, of the table tag. Now we're going to get complicated because we need to display the first record and the second record and X number of records, all of the records that we may add. Right now we have 10 records, but we're not going to say display 10 records because eventually we have 12 records. So we're going to need to always be able to display the current number of records. And that's going to be a brand new function, and it's going to be more complicated because we're going to, we're going to throw in a table. We need to make we need to build this table row by row. We can do it. 
So um, what's next is we need a new button that says, OK, um, we've inputted stuff into the database. Now show me the results of the database. So we'll need a new button here. Uh, we'll go back to the body of the document. And we'll say, Uh, line 47 or so, uh, we're going to add a new input tag, another button, input type button, <coughs> value. Value. What what do we want to display on screen? Well, the little button will say show, show classes. classes. Yeah. Show classes taken or yeah, any anything we want. So simply in the value here, um, whatever we want, and then we'll have a um, an on click. And since we had add classes function, we'll do show classes function. That then gets to the point, well, if we've got a button that says show classes, why don't we add a button that says, or rename our button to say add classes instead of go? What does go actually do? So this is again aesthetics, but, and it's user interface, UX design. Um, so we'll say add class. The go button now, it's going to say add class. It makes more sense. Go, like go what, do what. Here it's very specific, add a class when you press this button, show the classes when you press that button. Show classes. So then we need to define that function show classes. We'll go back to our script section. I'll actually just save it and run it. Nothing will happen yet, but at least we'll see we've got those buttons. Okay, so back on our script, make sure we're outside of the clear fields function, and we'll create function, show classes. Okay, so here... Um, PouchDB has a built-in feature that will allow you to retrieve uh, the documents from the database. But then we have to format that data, put it on screen actually, because when we saw, when we displayed an error message or even a positive message, it was a JSON string or whatever, it wasn't really, you know, parsed in a way for, for users. So we need to do a couple of little tricks here. So under Show Classes, let me actually go reference this inside of um, the documentation. What we're going to do is access on the API. We're going to do fetch doc, and we're going to do, which one is it? Batch fetch. We're going to do the one of, under batch fetch. Fetch multiple documents. So this one actually has two options. We're going to say db.alldocs. Give me all the docs. How? options, such as what order to give them, alphabetically, reverse alphabetically, etc. And then a callback function, which we will use because we need to, uh, again, parse this data. So back to our code. Inside of show classes, we're going to say db. All docs is capital D. And then open close parentheses, semicolon.
getting so here you know, if you have an adult getting it, so you could repurpose your adult function. You could, but we're going to be so doing uh, more options than one, and also a different function, a callback function. So inside of all docs, we will actually I'll break this down like that, I suppose, more like this, like before, just to save a little space. Uh, so what all docs will do is retrieve the data. You have to tell it how first, and we need to tell it two, uh, two things. First of all, give me all the records and then put it in uh, ascending order. So uh, smallest Sierra number to largest Sierra number. We're going to ascend from the smallest to the largest. So this is actually going to be inside of a, of a JSON string here. So on this first line, We're going to give it two options. The first one is include underscore docs true. <coughs> Docos. Comma. Ascending. True. At the end of that line, then a comma, because remember there was uh, what are the options to retrieve the data, and then what is the callback function. <coughs> so comma right there, next line. We'll say function. Just to contrast with the previous one, we will keep it as an anonymous function. So we could call it again callback, but <coughs> keep it anonymous. And we'll have open close parentheses. Curly brace. Close that curly brace. <coughs> so the documentation, remember it says there's going to be positive result, negative result. So the first one would be error just error, error, and then the second will be the actual docs that we're getting out of the um, each doc, each document that we're getting out of the database. So the show classes is going to get, is going to pull the data out of the database, but it's going to give it to us in a, in a very um, you know, database friendly format, but not in a very user friendly format. So on this next line, we're going to make, uh, we're going to call a function here, which the next function, with which that function will then actually build the results in a table row by row. So on this next line, we'll say show table of classes. Um, I'm not going to do anything with it. We should, but I'll skip it for the moment. Show table of classes, open close parentheses, semicolon. And what I'm going to pass into this function is docs rows. Rows comes from PouchDB. Um, each particular row of data, I'm saying for each, oops, that should be doc. Uh, each doc that I'm pulling out, give me the row, and then we're going to display it in a table 
I'm going to build a table. What if you have no data? If we have no data, that will that uh, should get taken care of previously over here if there is an error because you're going to get uh, an error down there and then visually nothing will display. The table will not display but we will get this error message. Yeah, not calling that. That is, yeah. That, that's completely different function from the show Yes, but but again, if there if there is no data, this will not be pulling out anything from the database, so that there will be no table that displays. Uh, we should then take advantage of that error and actually, you know, display something. But at this point, at this point, we still have uh, this other function to put together, which is a little uh, complicated because we're going to build a table, and uh, tables we have to define them by rows and cells and all of that. So uh, actually I think at this point uh, we'll end and then we'll start fresh on uh, next time where we're going to say, okay, we've got this data in the database. We want to show it on screen through this table. That's, what's, that's what show table of classes will do. If you want to get a preview of what it will look like, again, this that we are working on right now is what is a variation of what I've put into the, the, the Z drive if you got a copy of that inside of Simple Pouch example, so you might want to get a preview of that. This is our end result, but we'll, we'll do it together. And also, what I've got in here are other links to tutorials that you should check out. What, I've, um, what we're working on together is based on a, on a YouTube video uh, to jumpstart with, with Pouch, and then links to a bunch of other resources. Uh, so, I'm going to put my code as it is into the network drive. So you can get a copy of it if you want, but we'll wrap up at this point. And as we're seeing here, there's a lot we need to, to deal with, isn't there? That's why we started on a completely empty document just to focus on this database. And then when this is working, then we can put it into our... Uh, project.